All right, guys, I'm indoors for the intro today. I wonder why. Anyway, we got a second bucket of Casablanca, so we compare those to the ones from three weeks ago. A bit of harvesting and preserving, and I've made a new weeding tool. Right, right, guys, it's been a couple of weeks since I uh, tipped out the first bucket of Casablanca. I need some more potatoes, so I'm going to tip this one out and uh, we'll have a comparison, see what the sizes are like from, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, I can't remember now, two weeks to now, see what the sizes are like. Let's go and get it set up and uh, get filming. Well, oh, looking at those, I'd say they're about the same size, but I'm pretty sure there's more of them. Oh, well, there we are. Look. Pretty good harvest there, I think. Get them home, get them weighed, get them uh, washed and weighed. And in this bed, which is the uh, this where, where the shallots were a couple of days, well, yesterday. <laughs> um, this is where the shallots were. Bit of new compost on it, obviously. A um, little bit of fertiliser, and I should be putting some kohlrabi in in a minute. Okay, then here we go with the images of the two Casablanca harvests. I tried to get the pictures looking pretty much the same, so it's a true comparison. This first lot were tipped out on the 11th of June. Always a special moment, your first new potatoes. And here we are with the second lot. I think you would agree they are a bit bigger, and there's more of them. Uh, 1.5 kilos. Well, here we are then. Six kohlrabi, quick star. In where the shallots were, and in the old potato compost with just a sprinkle of Q4 professional um, powdered fertilizer. It's a general all-round fertilizer, so should be all right. Don't want any fresh manure with these because uh, they are uh, a brassica, and it burns them, my precious. And here are the aforementioned shallots. These are uh, shallot bistro, um, harvested to make way for the kohlrabi. So what I've done is top tail and peel them, chop them up into manageable sized pieces um, and bag them up and frozen them. Once again, I've put enough in each bag to cover one recipe. Well, I hope I have anyway. Um, Kelvin and Wonder peas and exhibition long pod broad beans. That's the end of the Kelvin and Wonders now. So. Uh, potted those and once again bagged and frozen them and while I was at it I picked the last of the snowball onions the overwintering onions just starting to bolt yeah, nice tasting onion they are I was up the plot this morning because I've got a dish plan and I needed the veg so I picked the turnips they are Milan purple top lovely colour aren't they um, couple of little tiny beetroot I say tiny the size of a golf ball they are uh, sabito and a couple of courgette a tain of polka those yellow ones they're one of the best courgettes I've ever had actually um, the turnips and beetroot will be in a dish 
tomorrow or the day after. I wonder if you can guess what it is. Remember a video or two ago I told you about my nemesis weed, uh, which I called chickweed. Well, that was wrong. Thanks, Nigel from Muddy Boots for correcting me. And what it is called is groundsel. So what I've done, I made a tool. I made a thing called a wire weeder. That's what you're looking at now. A bit of old rustic um, tree. Um, looking at YouTube, what you do with a wire weeder is you stick a couple of pieces of coat hanger and wire a coat hanger in the end. Make like a U shape with it and glue them in. And the comment generally is... Uh, it's too flimsy. So what I've done, I've used the hook of a coat hanger and it is sturdy as you like and it is a perfect little weeder. Saves getting the hoe out and it's great for those little annuals. So I'm going to set it up on a tripod and show you how it works. Here we go then. Isn't that great? All for Nothing, an old coat hanger and a piece of twig. That is, I'll tell you what, I'm impressed with that. <laughs> Doesn't take a lot, but I am. Just a few more stills before we wrap up today. Um, these are Amish paste tomatoes. Sun scorched, not heat, sun scorched. Uh, the tomatoes next to them are perfect. They recovered all right. I had to cut a few little uh, parts of the leaves off, but they're okay now. But you've got to love the tomato flowers. I'm doing quite a lot of companion planting this year and in the hanging baskets out the front with the tomatoes, I've got nasturtiums. What a lovely color. And in the quad grow, the solar quad grows, I've got French marigolds, gorgeous yellow. Hey, my granddaughter, uh, Olivia, has taken to befriending little animals, <laughs> snails and uh, slugs. The only problem is she's bringing them home to her, uh, her mum. Bless her. But she's learning a lot about them at the same time, which is good. And how ladybirds are nice and friendly. Catch you later then, guys. Look after yourselves and stay safe.